Hi there guys, welcome back to another video. My name is John Dean. Thank you for joining with, with me today in this very exciting tutorial where we will be looking at how to remove objects from a scene that get in the way using masks. I actually had to use this technique on a client who spat while they were talking. They didn't want the spit to come through on the video. Um, so I used this technique in a lot more of a granular way in order to edit out all the spit that was coming out the mouth, which was quite funny really. Let's dive in. Okay hey guys, so imagine this. Hugo himself from Hugo Boss has come to you. He needs a product video for uh, his Hugo Boss Energize fragrance for men. And you're very excited, you're pumped up about this project. You start shooting, everything's going well, you've just got the shot you want, but then your two-year-old, no! He gets in the way and he pushes a toy car onto the scene. Now that would be fine usually, but the shot that you've just got is absolutely phenomenal. It is the best shot ever. You need to remove the toy car from that scene so that you can use that shot. Now, obviously, this is a, just a stupid example. I very much doubt this would ever happen. And to be honest, you would just reshoot it. But I am just going to use this as an illustration of how to mask an object out of a scene. So let's take a look and dive in. OK, so we have our setup here. So let's take a look at the video. So we've got a nice Fragrance for Men Hugo Boss bottle. Not sponsored, by the way. And oh dear, the police car comes into shot. So what I like to do, first of all, is just find where the police car starts. So we get the police car coming in here. Now, obviously, this is quite an easy fix, to be honest. But I'm, what I'm going to do is pretend this is a bit more complicated to show you how to mask out things that are a bit more annoying and not so straightforward as this setup. So uh, I like to put a cut there, as I say. Um, and then what we can do, we need to duplicate this um, this piece of media. So we hold down Alt and then drag and drop and that duplicates basically a quick way to copy and paste. And then what we need to do is go into our effects library and type in draw. And we just need to draw, uh, drag the draw mask on top of uh, on the top clip. And then at this point, we're going to disable the bottom one by hitting the V key. And then um, it's saying here that you need to uh, click to add control points. So we're going to, first of all, zoom out so we can see the entire um, screen properly. Uh, and I'm just going to click here. Obviously, this is going to be just be a very rough mask. Um, and I'm going to just create a box about the size of the car. I'm going to click invert. And then what we need to do is go to transform, uh, hit that just in case we use that. Uh, and then we click on the control points as well. So we create in a keyframe. Now, if you're not aware, keyframes are an incredibly important part of Final Cut Pro in general. Um, if you master keyframes, you can do pretty much anything in Final Cut Pro uh, that you need to. So yeah definitely get used to using keyframes if you haven't already um, and then what we're going to do is frame by frame we're going to just click along and follow the car so at the moment it's not visible uh, but you can see it's starting to become visible there so we will just drag that out and then you can see some more of the shadow there and what we need to be careful of is the shadow of the car as well it might become a problem uh, so we're just going to drag it out there. So basically, frame by frame, you want to uh, just uh, create uh, a rough image, a rough mask around the problem object. So I think we're nearly there, to be honest. Uh, so we're just adjusting the keyframes. In fact, we don't need all the space in the end. I was wrong with that. Uh, so we're just... Drag these along. I might zoom in a bit more if I can. You can use this hand tool actually on the box. Uh, sometimes if you this red box comes up, it means you're just zoomed in. You can just 
get rid of that box by the way by clicking fit um, if that becomes annoying that is often a problem uh, and then yeah so I think we're nearly there yeah and we can see the cars completely covered now so yeah we've done a very basic mask and to be honest it's a bit of a sort of um a silly example really but uh, you can use this for a lot of situations so yeah if we just play back you can see that the mask is following along because of the keyframes that we've put in place it's sort of pinning it at each frame and moving it along so yeah we've got what we need um, now in order to get rid of uh, you know the, the problem here first of all let's just go to fit so we can see the whole thing uh, and then we can just simply hit V turn on the bottom uh, image which obviously is uh, a duplicate of uh, the top image but what we're going to do now is um, in effect what we've got is two layers so we've got one layer that we've done the mask on and then underneath we've got just a clean version of the clip with no editing no effects on so in effect we've made a sandwich a layer sandwich in Final Cut Pro um, and what we're going to do is basically shift the bottom uh, layer so that it covers up uh, from the underneath um, the top layer. So what we're going to do is click on the bottom clip uh, and then we're going to change our position. So um, you can see what that's doing is shifting the layer so only the white bit of the background uh, is visible. So for instance if we now shift over using the x-axis you can see the bottle there so basically we're just moving the bottom layer around um, and you can see we've got some we've got some shadows there so what we need to do is just expand that out a bit so we click on the top layer and just move the points All right so that's that and we've got quite a lot of shadow so I'm just going to shift it over and make it a bigger mask now and then I'm going to just try and polish it up a bit so let's click on the top click feather still got some shadows coming through I think so we just do a bit of a tidy up so I'm just playing with the transform I'm even sort of up in the scale um, to basically just polish it up a bit more this is a service announcement. Thank you for coming to my airline. Please remember to hit the like and the subscribe button. Otherwise, this plane might crash and burn. Okay, so that's that, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, what we did was we moved the bottom bit around. We polished it up. We even used the scale um, because there's a lot of white anyway that we could use to try and match the background uh, with the foreground uh, to cover up the police car. So um, using the feather tool as well can be really helpful. And also the fall off slider as well can really help you out in that situation. So I hope this video has been helpful. Now for more complicated edits and for, you know, for things that are really quite difficult to edit out, there are plugins out there. I will put a link in the description to a great video um, all about a plugin by Core Melt called Slice X, um, which is really good. It actually tracks problem objects um, and uh, covers it over with another element on the screen for you. But for basic edits, um, this is fine. I will also put a link to another tutorial on this topic from a great, um, a great tutorial, really simple to follow, um, that will help you that gives you an example of a signpost uh, in the middle of a road that someone masks out. So I will link that in the description as well. You guys are the best. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you do have any questions or comments, please do remember to put them below. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please do remember to hit the like and the subscribe button. It is vitally important that is done in order to encourage me to keep making more of this type of content more tutorials on filmmaking and editing you guys are the best keep making videos and i look forward to catching you in the next one bye for now